Hi everybody, this is Emily from the NetZoom team. ServiceNow is a crucial platform for service management and ticketing, essential to your business operations and the change management that takes place. However, it is important to recognize that our IT infrastructure and data centers are the lifeline today that enable our business units to collect, exchange, information, and operate on a day-to-day -day basis, making it essential that our data centers remain up and running and are effectively and optimally functional and scalable to support our needs today as well as for tomorrow. Given that in today's world, most business units rely heavily on their IT infrastructure, networks, and data centers, it is crucial that all service management and ticketing is effectively processed in a timely manner and resolutions are reached quickly and easily to prevent any operational roadblocks in your business. So today I'm going to show you how easy it is to configure the NetZoom add-in for ServiceNow and begin enhancing your ServiceNow assets with NetZoom's device models and suite of features. NetZoom, when used as an add-in to ServiceNow to visually model and manage the physical data center assets, seamlessly extends ServiceNow to meet the requirements of visual asset management in the data center. NetZoom offers visual data center infrastructure management that improves the accuracy of the CMDB while simplifying ticketing management, increasing productivity, and extending the functionality of ServiceNow to meet the challenges of managing any moves, changes, or additions to a data center. And the best part about this is, whether using the NetZoom add-in for ServiceNow as a standalone application or as part of NetZoom Enterprise's suite of features, this video will work the same way for configuring your NetZoom installation. Once you have your NetZoom application all set up, You'll need to log into your ServiceNow instance. Enter the URL for your ServiceNow instance in the web browser. Then, when prompted, enter your username and password. Now that we're logged in, we'll need to install the NetZoom add-in from the ServiceNow store. Search for System Applications and click the Search ServiceNow Store feature. As you can see, the store will launch in a new window. Search for NetZoom, and you will find that the add-in connector shows up in the search results. Click on it and click the Get button to add the NetZoom add-in connector to your ServiceNow installation. Now that we've added the NetZoom add-in to our ServiceNow application, let's make sure our NetZoom instance is properly configured. Search for NetZoom in the filter navigator, and click Settings under the Configuration tab. Here, you can use the settings for your NetZoom integration. Ensure that all the instance URL, username, password, and ServiceNow account information is correct. You can also change certain NetZoom settings here using these checkboxes. Click the Save button when you're finished. As you can see, our instance is already if properly configured. Now that we've got our NetZoom instance configured in ServiceNow, we need to make sure that our ServiceNow instance is configured in NetZoom. In the new screen, enter your NetZoom ServiceNow add-in URL or NetZoom Enterprise URL. Then when prompted, enter your username and password as normal. For the purposes of this video, we'll be using the NetZoom add-in for ServiceNow application, but if you're integrating ServiceNow with your NetZoom Enterprise integration, this will work the same way. Navigate to the ServiceNow feature under the Settings tab. In NetZoom Enterprise, this will be under the Third Party Integration tab in the Administration menu. Use this feature to set up your ServiceNow instance. Click the plus icon at the bottom of the feature and then enter the information required, such as the name, a description if you like, the URL, username, and password. Click the Save button when finished. Once you're finished, you can test using the Test button and enable the server instance using the Enable button. As you can see, we already have our integration set up and enabled, as shown by this green checkmark. The next step is mapping our properties. 
As you know, users take advantage of ServiceNow's configuration items, or CIs, to track their assets. NetZoom has a similar concept, known as entities and properties. Entities and their related properties must be mapped to configuration items in order for ServiceNow and NetZoom to share data with each other. Click the Map Quick Action. A list of configuration items will appear on the middle pane, while a list of NetZoom entities appears on the right pane. In order to map configuration items with properties, you simply need to select the configuration item and the associated NetZoom entity or property that you want to map. So for example, if we open the racks, we can select the asset ID tag and map it to the asset tag and configuration items. To map these, it's as simple as selecting the two and clicking the map button down here. As you can see with the highlighted entities, we've already got some of our configuration items mapped to entities. The rack entity in particular has its name, description, node path, and asset ID mapped. By clicking this button, we will open the configuration item mapping preview pane. This allows us to see a list of properties that are mapped to the selected NetZoom entity, in this case, a rack. Notice the CI field and property name referencing the configuration item and the NetZoom property that has been mapped. Also, notice in the middle here, you can see these directional arrows. This determines which direction the data will sync. A left-facing arrow means that whenever a change is made in NetZoom to this property, that change will automatically be reflected in ServiceNow. A right-facing arrow means any change made in ServiceNow will be reflected in NetZoom. Both facing arrows are bi-directional mapping, which means that any change in either application will automatically be updated in the other application. As you can see, changing this mapping is as simple as clicking the drop-down list and checking the direction you want to map. But for now, we're going to keep this as bi-directional. After we're done mapping our properties, we need to set our relations. We can do this using the relations quick action. At this time, NetZoom only has two relations, powered slash powered by and contains slash contains by. Select the appropriate ServiceNow relation, then under the NZ relation column, select the appropriate NetZoom relation from the drop-down list. In this case, these are already pre-mapped, as you can see. The last thing we need is to make sure our source of truth is properly configured. This is key and must be set appropriately. This determines which application will be considered the source of truth as far as the data is concerned, so we can bring the data over from the, that source to the other application. Although you may set the source of truth as NetZoom initially po to populate all the data into ServiceNow, Later down the road, you may choose to change the source of truth so it is set to ServiceNow, keeping ServiceNow as the master of all data if needed. This can be done using the Application Parameters feature. Custom settings can be created and modified using this feature. Navigate to the feature, and then we're going to select the drop-down list and search for the ServiceNow category. Once we select it, we'll see that our list has been pared down a lot, and we'll notice that one of these application parameters is called Source of Truth. To change the Source of Truth from NetZoom to ServiceNow, it's as simple as clicking on the value field and entering ServiceNow. Clicking away will automatically update the field. You can change this whenever you want using this feature. If you want to change it back to NetZoom, simply put the Source of Truth as NetZoom, all lowercase, no spaces. But let's leave the source of truth as ServiceNow. Now that we've configured our installation, we can begin to show it off. Let's navigate to the Edit Data Center feature under the Data Center tab. This feature will allow us to make ad hoc changes to our enterprise. As you can see, we have a couple of racks here. We're going to remove one of them from our data center. and we'll also make sure that device is removed from our inventory entirely. Now, the rack has been deleted from NetZoom, but it still exists in ServiceNow. Since ServiceNow is the source of truth, we can pull the data from ServiceNow and populate it in NetZoom. Let's navigate back to the ServiceNow feature under Settings. 
Then we'll click the Populate Quick Action. This will bring data from our source of truth to the destination. In this case, it'll bring our missing rack from ServiceNow into NetZoom. Now that the population of devices from ServiceNow to NetZoom is finished, we can talk about how NetZoom handles data from ServiceNow. Of course, NetZoom's asset management includes a hierarchical tree view as well as related device models. These things ServiceNow just doesn't have. So to help with that, we've got the Create Asset feature, which in this case is found under the Data Center menu. This feature is automatically populated when you bring assets from ServiceNow into NetZoom. As you can see, a list of ServiceNow assets appears. In this case, we're seeing the assets related to the rack we just deleted. The purpose of this feature is to assign device models to these ServiceNow assets and place them in their proper data center locations. You can search the device library using the tools found here to find the models that represent your ServiceNow assets. For example, this ServiceNow asset represents the rack itself, AS103. I happen to know what the EQID of that device model is, so I can just search for it using the search pane. However, you can also search by manufacturer, equipment types, or by keywords. Once we've found the device model we want to use, we click it and drag it over to the ServiceNow asset in the list. It'll ask us if we're sure, and we click the Yes button. Now this ServiceNow asset has been assigned an EQID device. We'll do this for every device in the rack as needed. Once you've found the right models for your assets, you can just simply click the Create button to add these assets to your data center. If your assets have location info, click Create Locations first to automatically generate the locations for your racks. If for any reason NetZoom cannot figure out where to place your devices, they will automatically be added to your inventory. You can add them to the data center to the appropriate place from here. Once you've clicked your create and your assets have been created, we can navigate back to the data center and, as you can see, our rack has been re-added to NetZoom. Now I want to show off how changes in NetZoom will be reflected in ServiceNow and vice versa. We'll navigate to the Edit Data Center where we can make changes and we'll select a device on this rack. I'm going to move this device in RU21 up to RU26. Since this is bi-directionally mapped, any change here will be automatically reflected in ServiceNow. Let's navigate back there and select Rack AS106. As you can see, the device in ServiceNow has been moved to RU26, reflecting exactly as it is in NetZoom. That covers using the add-in with ServiceNow as the source of truth. But what if NetZoom is your source of truth? Well, to find out, we're going to quickly change sites, and we're going to change the source of truth in application parameters. Before we show off NetZoom as the source of truth, I want to show you the bi-directional mapping of changes by changing the RU position of a device on another rack from ServiceNow and showing how it reflects in NetZoom. As you can see, we have this rack S103 with the following devices installed on it. We can see that this device is on RU25. If we navigate back to ServiceNow and find that same rack, we'll see the devices listed as being contained by the rack. Select the device we want to move and change the RU position here. We'll change it to 31. Click the Update button. And once the device is updated, navigate back to your NetZoom installation and refresh the page. As you can see, the device has moved from its position at RU25 to RU31. Since we're looking at the rack in service now, we can see the additional details that NetZoom provides. Not only does it show properties for the rack, including the name, description, asset tags, floor positions, and locations. You can also select a device preview of the device to see a 2D representation of the rack, including all of its devices. This is only available with Net the NetZoom integration and uses NetZoom's device models to display the pictures. Using NetZoom's asset management and service now also shows you the devices installed in the rack using these relationships. You can see image previews of your devices using the preview button, 
Using NetZoom as your source of truth also allows you to view the connectivity between devices as well as smaller devices such as cards and modules you have installed within ServiceNow. We've navigated to another ServiceNow instance in order to show this off. Let's select this rack right here and we'll select one of the devices on it. As you can see, when we select this server contained by our rack, we can see all the modules that the server contains. These are tracked as assets, just like any other asset in ServiceNow as configuration items. Also, notice the Powered By section. This shows you what devices are providing power to this server. If we wanted to view a map of the dependencies, we can click the Show Dependency Views. We can see a flow chart of dependencies. In this case, we have the server, as well as all the modules contained in it, as well as the rack that the server is contained in, and the two PDUs that provide the server power. Now we're going to navigate back to the rack we were looking at before. Now that we've seen all the details of this rack, let's delete it from ServiceNow, so we can show it being repopulated from NetZoom. Click the Delete button, and then confirm the deletion. As you can see, the rack has been removed from ServiceNow. If we navigate back to our NetZoom instance, going to the ServiceNow configuration feature, it's going to pull all the data from NetZoom to ServiceNow, because NetZoom is our source of truth. Once that's finished, we can navigate back to ServiceNow and refresh it. And as you can see, the rack has been re-added, along with all of its related devices. That covers the basics of configuring NetZoom's add-in for ServiceNow, as well as, as well as generally what the add-in is capable of. I hope you've learned something from this video, and please check out our other videos for more tips on how to use the NetZoom product. And remember, you can always visit NetZoom.com to schedule a free demo.